Happy New Comic Book Day, Webheads! Yes, it's Wednesday. It's a beautiful day. Hopefully, you guys are having a good morning yourselves. I'm excited to go to the shop today because Transformers Issue 7 is getting ready to come out. The battle between Soundwave and Starscream. We got Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. It's going to be a great comic book week. Good luck on finding everything that you're looking for at the shop. Welcome to Spider Slayer's Comic Book Hall. Fans, this is episode 633, the video series where each and every week I share with you what I pick up at my LCS Comic Central located in the city of Sanford. So if you guys are ever in the Central Florida area, stop by, tell Mike Spider Slayer sent you. You'll get great customer service, you'll find great books, and you will also get a mysterious black bag, and inside will be those comic book guys. I am so excited for this current comic book week just because of Transformers in itself. I'm hoping we get the outcome that I'm praying for, right? So not only did I get one, but I got two mysterious black bags. So let's go through the smaller one first because I think it's got the bagged and boarded issues and the, backs, uh, the back issue stuff. So here we go. Little stack right there. This book is quickly becoming the cover that I constantly get it's getting up there to like Angela the first appearance of Angela this is uncanny x-men issue 214 I recently bought a cover uh, of this about a few weeks ago but this one is a new stand it's a high grade copy so I was like why not get another one so I think this is like my fourth or fifth one and if there's more I'll just continue to buy it <laughs> And then I got 218. I paid five dollars for this book. Dazzler is in this book as well. This is also a newsstand, so pretty sweet. And then I got issue 219 of Uncanny X-Men. Paid five dollars for this one. Newsstand as well. And then I got issue 220. It's got Forge on there with Storm. Uh, paid $7 for this book. This one is a direct edition or has the Year of the Reader little logo on the bottom. Then I got issue 305. Nice uh, road cover there with Bishop. I think that's pretty cool. So scored that one. All right. And then we got only, which looks like two, I guess, incentive covers here. Uh, we got Transformers, the one in 10. This is uh, $7 I paid for this one. We have Carly here, who's kind of really upset. She's beside herself. And we got Soundwave and Optimus Prime there. So is that things to come? I don't know. We will see. So I was like, yes. And then I was like, oh, man, do they have the one in 25? And I looked behind the counter because this was the, this was the cover I wanted. Out of all the covers, better than a 1 to 50, this was it right here. Soundwave. Over Starscream, Laser Beak in the background, homage to Amazing Spider Man. Love this freaking cover. Paid $15 for this one. Absolutely such a great book. All right, so that was the first little bag of goodies right there. So now, with that being said, let's move on to book, uh, book two, bag number two. So here we go. Here is the stack right here. And the first things first is we got a new event book, and this one goes to... Oh, the rain! Webheads out there! I, I have to get through to you! This message comes from the past, all the way from two days ago! I have to show this all to you because if I don't show this haul within the haul, it could affect you going to the comic book shop and buying your comics this week! I have to show it. I have to show it. You have to control the stream from the past. Here we go. This is what I got two days ago. X-Men. Mr. Sinister. First appearance. Got it for ten bucks. Sweet cover. Can't deny that. Ugh. Then I got Peter Parker. Spectacular Spider-Man. Another mutant comic with saber tears in it. This is issue 119. Next one. 
Another comic book that has another mutant in it. Hold on, you have to finish watching this. This is The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 327. Has Magneto fighting Spider-Man. Cosmic Spider-Man. Oh, and the most important thing of all, if you don't see this final one, you won't be able to go to the shop. Watch it. Here it is. Bam. The CGC 9.6. Oh my god, hold on, hold on, hold on, Mike Spider Slayer from the past. 9.6 X-Men, Uncanny, 283, the first full appearance of Bishop. I got my message through. Hopefully everyone has a great new comic book day. Holy cow, like, what the hell just happened, man? Did the halls just cross over within each other? Oh my gosh, that's insane. Well... At least I'm back and showing you the haul going forward here. So, all right. Going back to Superman Action Comics, we have issue 1054, House of Brainiac. This is issue one. Looking forward to this. I guess this is the first big Superman event since, uh, you know, we have the new creative teams on the book. Looks like gorgeous artwork in here. I'm definitely looking forward to this comic. Oh, wow. Look at this two-page spread here. That looks nice, guys. Cannot wait for that one. All right. And then it looks like we go to a random uh, indie book. This is Uncanny Valley. This is written by Tony Fleece. Now, remember, he's the same writer that does Stray Dogs and Feral. So I heard that this was really, really good. So I am excited. This actually was not on my pull list to start off with. So, but I was told that I must read this book. So this is good. We'll see what happens. I'll talk about it on Worthy Ones tomorrow. All right. And then, looks like we're going to dive into a Marvel book. So we got Carnage issue six, as this continues to cross over with the uh, Venom storyline. And it's been interesting, very entertaining. Look at that two-page spread. Holy cow, man. The art is phenomenal in that. So yeah, again, it's all crossing over and uh, it's a pretty dark book. I would recommend it, it's pretty solid. All right, then I have Symbiote Spider-Man 2099. This is issue two. First issue was pretty good. We got to see Miguel O'Hara become the symbiotic Spider-Man 2099 at the end of the last issue and that's what he looks like. Almost looks like a little bit like Magneto there, right? So the first, last issue was all right. It wasn't anything that really like blown me away or anything, but it was, it was fine. So we'll see where this issue goes. Now, a book that I've been really enjoying is Wolverine. This is issue 47. Uh, we have, which looks like Laura's back in the picture and she's fighting the female version of Sabretooth. Now, all these different Sabretooths are from different Earths. So I want to see her work her way out. This book is best when there's lots of action, lots of gore uh, between Sabretooth and Wolverine. Like, look at all that, guys. Oh, my gosh. That's the best. Just reminds me of a movie, right? Okay. And then we have Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. Fantastic book. Issue 5. Probably my second most anticipated book of the week. You know, the little bear, Sam, is kind of under some duress right now. And her back is a little bit against the wall, thanks to some rat. Uh, really, really good stuff. Love this book. If you guys are not reading this book, you should. There's first, second, or there's, there's second printings of the first, second, and third issue. I suggest you go to the comic shop, find it, and read it. If you can't get those second prints, then wait for the trade. But this is one of the best books this year. Another really solid book, we have The Return. Oh, the return. This is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, The Return. This is issue three. Really solid book as the Pink Ranger makes a return here. And it looks like our Power Rangers lie dormant for like 22 years. And it looks like they're going to have to be forced to um, use their powers once again. We got, uh, is it Rita? Right? Rita Repulsa. Looks like her daughter's in this book. So I like it. I think it's really good. You know, I don't even think you have to be a longtime Power Ranger fan to understand anything that's going on in here. So, definitely looking forward to that. 
All right, guys. So with that being said, it's now time for those Facebook group shout outs. Our first shout out of the day goes to Jim. And he said, I saw someone else in the group put a picture of their comic room. I thought I'd share mine here as well. What a great looking room, man. I like seeing everyone's comic rooms in the Facebook group. It shows that your guys' rooms are a little bit better than mine. I have a, literally a little space in the garage. And then we have Dan who says, great to meet Ken Lashley today at Rose City Comic Con in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Excuse me, can't read. Ken really appreciated his fans and is the real deal. Respect, brother. That is super awesome, man. Pretty cool. Thank you so much, Dan, for sharing. Then I have Simon here who says, sharing pics of my comic room here in London. Love the group and seeing everyone's posts, but most importantly, seeing Mike's videos each week. That is sick, man. Thank you so much for sharing all your posts, guys. And then I also have Terrence who said, took my daughter to the comic book shop for the first time and she loved it. There is nothing better than taking a kid to the comic shop for the first time. I remember taking my daughter and my son and it's just like opening their opening their eyes to a whole new world. It's very important to get that next generation in those comic shops. And if you guys want to get shouted out on future hauls, just head on over to Facebook search for my group called Comic Book Corner 2.0 Webhead Unite and when you guys answer a few of the community guidelines and I look over and make sure you're a real person and I approve you then you will have access to this wonderful comic book community where we show about the eclipse that most recently happened we show some great comic book art we show some statues we show stories from the past our comic book halls our CGC slabs our stairway to heaven for comic books you guys know the picture and again most importantly you'll never know when you could get shouted out on future new comic book day hauls. All right, our next book here is by Rick Remender. This is Napalm Lullaby. This is issue two. The first issue, like you had real no idea what the hell was going on until you read almost the letters page. And hopefully now we really get a, a concept of who these brother and sister actually are and what their mission is at hand. If this second issue doesn't really grab me, then I'll probably might drop this book. So we'll see uh, where this one does go. All right, then we have one of my favorite DC books, and it's not many of them. There's Green Lantern. This is issue 10. Uh, solid book. We just got word last issue that we have um, Earth is the actual backup Green Lantern battery and our Green Lanterns are the guardians of this backup battery. And I think that's great because what's going to happen is we're going to get all these different lanterns that we haven't seen for years and years. They're going to wind up being in this book. And right away, you get to see Jojo Mullins. You get to be Sam and Baz in here. Uh, Jessica Cruz is in here. So we're seeing more and more of the lanterns that we've been missing for quite some time now. So Jeremy Adams is doing a banger of a job here on writing this book. And I can't wait to see how this thing continues. Then we have... Batman and Robin, this is issue eight. We have the return of Flatline. She's teaming up with Damien in here and they gotta try to stop Man Bats. Uh, nice looking artwork. They're also teaming up with that mysterious character Sush uh, in there. So yeah, we'll see. But the artwork is nice, like I said, and I'm looking forward to it. Then we have more X-Men stuff. We got X-Men 97, this is issue two. Nice little cover, once again, with Wolverine and Saber uh, Sabercluth. <laughs> Sabertooth doing battle against each other. Uh, this is a nice little prelude to the animated series of what's going on right now. Definitely has that vibe going. It makes you feel like you are watching the animated show, so that's awesome. So I'm looking forward to it. We'll see what happens. And then we have the second issue of Ultimate X-Men. 
I want to see and I want to hear in the comments below, are you guys sticking with this book? Because I know a lot of people were disappointed in it and then there's other people that really want to give it a chance. So hopefully in this one, we're getting introduced to the character Maystorm uh, in this one. So we'll see. Uh, here's some more of that artwork. Again, it's all done by Peach Momoko in here. So yeah, we'll see what happens. So that's Ultimate X-Men issue two. Then we wind up getting the variant cover here as well as we get to see armor in her little armor thing. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. We have Ultimate X-Men issue two, another variant cover. Love this cover. This is really nice. Her like head is like really bent down and she's looking at one eye. It's like over-exaggerated pose. I like that. Then we got, just when you think it's done, it's not done guys, Ultimate Spider-Man issue one. I don't, what are we on? The fifth printing on this comic book? Like, dude, I have no idea where we're at on this one. Somewhere around there. I'm trying to see if it says it. But whatever. It's like fifth printing, sixth printing, whatever. We're going to go on to 15 printings in that. All right. And then we have Thundercats. This is issue three. We're going to see where Thundercats goes, guys. We got introduced to the new uh, Thundercat, which I think is being controlled by Mumra in here. I totally forgot her name. Uh, Lino still struggling to be the leader. Panther still trying to deal with him being the leader and not a little kid anymore. The artwork is just not that great. I'm going to give it another issue. We'll see what happens. If this book doesn't capture me uh, this time around, I might drop it. It's a shame. I was expecting this to be a little bit better than it is. But uh, yeah, it's kind of lacking for me. So we'll see. All right. And then we have... A freaking great book. This is Phantom Road. This is issue 10. Love these two characters here. You know, they've crossed paths. They come up with this artifact. They found out it's an egg. The egg hatches. And now this little alien thing, like, has their memories and they're connected by their pasts. It's just, yeah, that's the way the little alien baby thing looks. Dude, it's freaking sick. This book is great. It doesn't always come out every single month, but it is so good. Dude, the coloring looks really light in here. Is there a printing issue or is this just like a past, like a faded memory or something? I don't know. We'll see. So I love this book. Done by Jeff Lemire. Definitely another recommend, guys. All right. Let's see what else we have. We have the new Spawn book. It's like Spawn 2099. Rat City issue one. This one is not done by Todd McFarlane. This one's done by Erica Schultz. And uh, here's what you can expect in the artwork. So this guy's like a soldier. He's an amputee. Al Simmons did some kind of, I don't know, magic stuff to where his symbiote goes to his, like, his uh, amputee, like, into his, his prosthetic legs. And then now he becomes somehow the, uh, the spawn of the future, which looks like. So I don't know, man. We'll see. This could be a fun story. Looking forward to seeing how it's different from any other Spawn book. All right. And then we have more Marvel. We have The Invincible Iron Man. This is issue 17. Love this book. We got to see the Mark 72 in action. They're trying to fight Orcus. It's just an all-out brawl right now, man. It's just you can feel the back against the wall. Unfortunately, the artwork is definitely a lot different in this issue. We got a guest artist, and the way I'm looking at this art, it's not my favorite artwork here. But we'll see what happens. Who does the artwork in this one? Patch Zercher, guest artist. So, I don't know. We'll see. A little heavy on the inks for my taste. All right. And then we have the Incredible Hulk. This is issue 11. I'm really down on this series right now. I could really use some Nick Klein artwork and we just don't get it, man. We still get the same artist on this book. Last issue had no action. We have Hulk investigating this, was it Frozen Charlotte character or whatever it is. And now maybe it looks like they're fighting each other. There's been really no story progression in this book. I'm definitely, I wanna like it so bad. I like don't wanna drop it because I have hope that it's going to get better but it's just not, you know? It's like, come on, man. And then we have Edge of Spider-Verse. We get the introduction to Star Spider. This one's got like a spaceship with it, you know? I don't know, maybe this is the next big spider character. We'll see if she sticks to the wall, if people tend to like her. 
you know but yeah she has a ship that's like a, a spider <laughs> but the artwork looks good in it man i like the suit and everything pretty snazzy if i should say so myself so pretty cool stuff all right and then we have the amazing spider-man with the greatest cover of them all yeah hopefully you know i'm being sarcastic here what is up with this cover my god hollow's eve just looks atrocious and then like chasm oh my lord but uh, we got the interior artwork, though. It's much better. So, and it looks like maybe we're going to get these two characters back in here. Does Peter go on a date? I don't know, man. It's a lot of standing around talking. He looks nervous. Let's hope the issue is good. So far, I don't see any Spider-Man. Oh, he's changing right there at the end. I don't know, man. We'll see. Then I wound up getting this variant cover because I thought it was cool. Homage to West Coast Avengers issue one. All right, and then we had to get a couple more of the Transformers covers. Obviously, we wound up getting uh, the main cover. Love this cover with Starscream uh, destroying, which looks like maybe Ravage here. That's not what I want to see, right? Do I show you artwork? I'm going to show you this one page just so you can see. Okay, two pages. Just so you can see Jorge Corona's artwork and see if it's for you. Because I don't want to spoil anything. So here you go. It looks pretty good. There's not too much which feels like a change. There you get to see Cup in there. We get to see Huffer. So that's really cool. Right? The coloring is the same. Same colorist. So Mike Spicer does the coloring. So there you go. So hopefully... This doesn't change too much for you. I'm excited, man. And then I wound up getting the main, the other variant cover here where they're on the ship. And that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this haul. I'm sorry for the interruption from Mike Spider Slayer in the past, but, you know, he had to get his message across, right? <laughs> so, guys, I want to know what you got this week in the comment section below and what you're looking forward to most reading. And as always, I'm going to leave you more content right here. This is my top 10 most anticipated comics for next week. And as always, guys, support the local comic shops. Keep buying, keep collecting. Always remember to read those comics so we can have awesome conversation when it comes to comic books. Guys, have a great new comic book day.